All right, so today we're going to show you how to, you know, maintain your skis and wax them. First thing you're going to want to do to when you're doing this is to keep your skis clean. So you want to get a lot of the dirt off and oxidation. So you're going to start with a brass brush, and we're going to brush tip to tail. If you prefer to go this way, you can mount it that way. I always brush this direction. And you'll see if the ski's dirty, you know, you might have to spend more time doing this, but just maintain your tip to tail direction. And you'll be doing good. And you'll see you'll, you're getting some of the old wax out, and there's like powder in between here. So once you got it, you can just take your horse hair just to knock all that loose stuff off. You don't really need to polish it at this point because we're going to melt some wax into it. So now that it's basically clean, we could uh, melt some wax into this. Uh, do you want to, Steve, show them how this is done? Yeah, well first we'll give them the close up. This is the brass brush uh, made by many different manufacturers. Um, you'll see that it's got like a, 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 a kind of a coarse brass uh, texture. All different kind of manufacturers will, will have different uh, features to it, maybe a horsehair thing around the edge. And then your horsehair brushes tend to be uh, just a pure, basic, uh, fuzzy horsehair brush on a wooden base. Okay, the next tool that you need is going to be an iron. We have a couple different uh, styles of irons. You're going to want a flat base. You don't want to use a clothes iron that has holes. You'll get wax build up in the holes and you supposedly could start a fire like that. I've never tested it out. Um, some irons are going to have a curve to it, some are going to be flat, and another thing to look at is the thickness of the base. The thicker it is, it's going to take longer to heat up, but it'll maintain a consistent temperature longer. So here's, you know, another one. This has got a total flat base. It's a little thicker, and it's got a control for temperature. So on a, a hard wax you're going to use in cold conditions, you're going to have to turn this up to melt the wax. A soft wax doesn't have to be as hot. As a rule of thumb, when you're picking your wax, when you melt it on there, if you see any smoke, it's too hot, and you want to turn your iron down. And if it's not melting, you got to turn it up. So today, we're just going to use some universal, just basically cleaning the bases, getting some in there. We're not waxing for a specific day, so we don't know what temperature to use. So I've got just a block of some universal wax, and we're going to drip it on the skis. Trent, what's that motion that you're doing? Uh, right now, I'm just kind of going back and forth. So I've, you know, there's wax on both sides, some towards the center. So when the wax iron touches on here afterwards, I'm riding over all the little dots of wax and I'm not touching the base of the ski with the iron. So I've got some wax on there and I'm going to take the iron. The most important thing is that you don't stop the iron. You want to keep it moving at all times. And you could just see the wax as it melts. And you could see I'm at a pretty good temperature right now. I think I'm running about 120 Celsius, which is going to work with most of your universal waxes, as long as, as well as your uh, softer waxes, like uh, you know, for days that are in the you know low 30s, high 20s type stuff, the wax that you'd be using would work at this temperature. How do you tell when you're done, Trent? Well, right now I just already eliminated where you don't see the separate dots. So now I'm just going to do a couple slow passes and just not move and go over it. And you'll see behind the iron where it's actually wet and you'll see it drying. So you definitely want to do maybe two to three passes at this speed without stopping. And then we're going to have to let them cool before we get to the scraping, which we'll talk about after these cool. Okay. 
Right now I'm kind of just holding the cord out of the way so I don't melt it. Sometimes when you drag, they get caught on the brakes and you end up stopping the iron because you got cord tangled and you don't want to do that. You know, one of the tips that I always uh, learned was feeling the underside of the ski and if you could feel that it was warm, you would know that it, the wax was heated all the way through the ski. That's a good technique. I'm going to have to remember that one. And now, basically, we have to let this cool, bring it up, you know, back to room temperature before we scrape it. So I'm just going to take this here, throw it up on the cooling racks, and we're available to... Chad, how frequently does a, uh, a ski racer wax their skis? Uh, a racer is going to be a lot different than a free skier every ski day. So if I have skied on the skis, I re-wax them before the next use. Um, some training days that come back to back, it's not possible. Just don't have time. So there is some time during the season that I will get two days of one waxing. Uh, is that overkill? Maybe. Uh, but I would definitely, I wouldn't go more than four days without waxing. You're going to start getting base burn, oxidation, and you'll notice the base of your skis turning kind of white. And when that happens, you definitely need to pump some wax in there. If they're turning white, I would go through the wax process two, three times in a row and really get it in there. Going on. Time to scrape the skis. So you need to select a scraper. And this particular scraper is getting kind of old and crappy. If you run your finger across the edge of it, you'll feel that it's not very sharp. And that it's maybe got a few burrs on it. If you run the, that scraper down the length of your ski, you're going to transfer all of those nicks and scratches into the nice structure of your base that we talked about earlier. So, some people go and buy new scrapers all the time, but most of us have to uh, reuse our scrapers for maybe a whole season. So, we buy these things called a scraper sharpener. And it has a nice serrated blade on it that um, has a perfect 90 degree angle that you can run the scraper across a few times to put it on a nice sharp edge. And then you end up with a beautiful new scraper with a nice clean edge you can uh, scrape your skis with. Um, some, sometimes we bring uh, on, up onto the race hill with us a, uh, a smaller, thinner scraper, scraper so that you can give your skis a good scrape and put your, your, uh, your top coat waxes on uh, before you run your race. So I try to, I try to bring a thin uh, scraper not one of these thick ones, in my pocket uh, when I'm up on the hill. Um, with that, we'll turn to actually uh, scraping the ski and then moving on to brushing it out. Go. All right, now that the ski is cooled, we're going to scrape. Got to make sure we're actually in the vise and tighten it in. And we're going to work everything tip to tail. So you're just going to want to... Kind of hold it, you'll see the wax coming off. So if you look at it close up here, you can see right here I didn't scrape any at all yet. You can see where there's more. So you're going to have to look at that and see where you need more scraping. So you hold that scraper at a 45 degree angle? Yeah, I try and get more leverage if I'm coming this way. Some people scrape this way. But you could push pretty hard when you're doing it. You're not going to hurt the ski. So I just, I prefer this technique. Something like 45 would work, yeah. All right, so once you got most of it uh, off there, you can go into brushing. And we're going to start with like a brass and then go to a nylon and uh, go from there. So this is just like before we were cleaning. If you get a close up on here, you'll see there's a structure in the ski. Whereas if I do this, you might be able to see better. It's a bunch of tiny grooves that are in the ski 
and basically we've got to get the wax out of those grooves. We don't want it to be flat. We want those grooves in there or the ski will basically be like a suction cup onto the snow, adding way more friction. It's going to slow you down. Then you're, all this is going to make you slower instead of faster. So you got to pay attention that you're getting the wax out of that. And what brush are you using, Trent? Well, I'm starting with the brass to get all the heavy stuff out. And then we're going to incrementally go to softer brushes. And for the whole process, you always, always maintain tip to tail. So once you got most of it, we can go to a nylon. It's still a heavy brush, not as heavy as the brass. And in between, you can always look how you're doing and see if you can see the structure in there and repeat the process with the horsehair. And you can even go to like a, the really soft nylon for like a final polishing. But that's basically going to be the same thing over and over. So that's really the whole process for waxing your skis. Also, you want to make sure you don't forget to get the wax off the edges. So you can hit the sides of them to get that off. And the base part of the edge has a bevel, so you just hold on a slight angle and get all that off. And then again, loose stuff off here. If you've got time, you can just keep brushing and brushing, and the more you brush, the better it's going to be. So. It's a matter of you want to spend 15 minutes or spend an hour and a half, you know? So, this right here, this ski would be ready to ski on. I would do it. Go fast, Team Trent. <laughs>